I sit down, I light one up, and pour myself a drink, and I am found that it picks me up, it gives me time to think. It's been a long day, you know it's true. But I'm feeling right at home And now I must say That time is due Let's get on with the show Not just blowing smoke All right, everybody, welcome to Not Just Blowing Smoke, coming at you live from Twin Smoke Shop Studio headquarters right here in the frigid state of New Hampshire. <laughs> yes, it is. Be sure to subscribe to us on Podbean, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Spotify, iTunes, Google, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Also, be sure to follow us on Facebook or YouTube if you are watching the stream live <laughs> there. I am Pastor Padron. This is... Uh, my co-host, Paul Pablo Maduro. Hello, folks. Dave, also known as Dave and Confused. Pat, uh, Pat Wente, only Pat Wente is Pat Wente, <laughs> is in school. <laughs> he couldn't be with us tonight because he had class. Mm, that's I'm right. Not talking about the kind of class that we have, but he's got school class. Yes, he yes. does. School class. Yes. All right. He needs, and he needs a lot of schooling. He needs a lot of schooling in a lot of different ways. But we're going to miss him anyway because this is one of his favorite cigars. And this is the show you've all been waiting for. We've been uh, wanting to share what our pick for the best new cigar and new pipe tobacco of 2021 was. Um, and the cigar that ended up on top was this, the CLE Signature T H T E K E three seventeen fifty four by six. I think he beat the otherwise numbers. Otherwise called the CLA signature Cameroon Toro, <laughs> which rolls uh, a little bit m more off the tongue. Also yes. known as yeah. Yeah, it is a Honduran grown Cameroon wrapper, undisclosed binder and filler, and it, it, you could guess by the uh, name of the cigar. That it is a Toro, it's six by fifty-four, or if you're like Christian who likes to do things in reverse, it's fifty-four by six. Yes. Yeah. Most of us go the length then the width, but he likes to go the width. He is the different. Length. He yes. is very, very different. Yes, but it makes him stand out. It does. Mm -hmm. It makes him stand out. Yes. Makes the cigars, and he has blended something oh. really, really fantastic. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. When it came into the stores in late fall. Right. Yep. Um, it immediately, you know, was a cigar that we were like, oh, what, what is this? Another signature? And then when we all tried it, uh, it, it became a huge hit at I, the I, store. It was, it was hard to keep these things in stock. It still is. And yep. I think initially it was the price point that might have turned some people away from it mm -hmm. without the rest of us getting behind it. So initially, again, these range anywhere from 17 to, what, $19 or something, right. that, something yep. in that range. Um, so, and again, his lines are really, really good, very well blended, really flavorful, um, you know, a little bit, little bit higher than uh, the average price of a cigar. Um, this one uh, in the CLE line was, you know, at that well, actually, at the time, it was the most expensive, mm -hmm. or the the line was most expensive. So, uh, but then our Pat Wente Pat Wente decided to plunge ahead and try one, and I'm going to say it because yeah. he he kind of denied it last time. Mm -hmm. when we did the episode several months ago um, when we did the uh, 11 by 18. Mm -hmm. um, he said it 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 was better than some of the Opus cigars 
that he had. At the time, he told me it was be- it was the best cigar he's ever had. I'll yep. say it I'm is. going on record. No that's what he told that. me. And I and so we all got behind it and, and tried it. And I would say, at the time, mm. this was the best cigar that I've had of 2021. Yeah, so. I, I, I would agree. And, and, you know, before we get any further, let's go back a little bit and talk about, you know, how we came up with this. Other people do – everybody does their top – cigar list differently yep um the way we do it Mm -hmm. is the cigar has to be new or at least new to twins correct in the year 2021 Mm -hmm. and it needs to be a cigar that's in regular production that you know so limited editions or you know things that come out there's only a thousand boxes then they're gone we'll talk about those and there are some of those that uh you know, if, if we had our druthers, that would probably have, have given this some more competition. But that's how we do it. Um, so as far as the cigars that came out in 2021 and that landed in uh, the shelves of Twin Smoke Shop, this was the clear standout. Correct. Clear standout. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's so nuanced and complex Mm -hmm. it's one of these cigars that you almost you really to me this is a cigar that you sip Mm -hmm. because (laughs) you really need the the flavor this is a this is a mild to medium cigar this is not a super strong cigar no and the flavors in it are there's lots of stuff going on and if you don't sit and take your time and try and think through those things it's very hard to say anything other than wow that's really good and it's really complex. Would you agree? I would agree. Now, we did this cigar, not this particular size. We did the we TAA did the 11 version. by 13. Le- the, yeah. Le- yeah, the 11, the 11 18, 18. 11, 18 uh, several months ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and the flavors you get out of that one are very similar to this. But maybe a slight change up uh, in a, a couple of different flavors that I get out of this that I did not get out of the 11, 18. Um, so I've got a lot of creamy, mm-hmm. cedary, a little bit of oaky wood, um, a nice little bit of cocoa and coffee, um, and an, again, <laughs> that cinnamon flavor too. Mm-hmm. Um, so the the one thing that was Definitely missing, on the palate, yeah, yeah, the one thing that was <laughs> missing the lat at uh, eleven eighteen was the uh, the oaky wood that I'm getting out of this. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, there was definitely. I was trying to place the kind of wood oaky yeah, is good. Yeah. Yeah. But again, either way, it's a just an absolutely very flavorful, subtle flavors, very complex. Um, like, like you said, Dan, you got to sit back and you just got to contemplate and let it come to you. Yeah. Um, this is not a cigar you want to have walking around, moving around. You want to be sitting, enjoying it because the flavors will keep coming at you and it's just intoxicating. Mm. Now, what are we pairing with this, Paul? Well, we are pairing. <laughs> Yes, yeah, pairing mm. exactly what we paired when we did the eleven eighteen. Mm-hmm. This is the patina fashion, and I got to say something. Um, something. Gianna, who's our newest bartender, yep. uh, was nice enough to make this for us tonight. Thank you very much, Gianna. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, Pat, well, since he wasn't here, told me to toast the orange. I don't know how good a job I did, but you, did um, you know, for not being a bartender, um, I think I did okay. I yep. don't nearly burnt my fingers doing it, but that's okay. <laughs> um, but in, in essence, uh, this is the same pairing that we had with the 1118 mm. several months ago. And after that show, when customers came in and they saw that that was one of our picks of the week, we were talking at length about how if they buy the cigar, you have to go upstairs and order patina fashion. And in that week... We talked to Kendra and a few other bartenders, and they said they'd never made so many patina fashions <laughs> before <laughs> other than that week. So You're welcome. Because we would just could not believe that was the perfect pairing for this cigar. It just brought out a lot of the stuff. It, it enhanced all the flavors. The cinnamon notes that you get out of the patina fashion go hand-in-hand hand with the mm-hmm. cinnamon uh, and the cedar and the creaminess of this cigar, and it just keeps coming. It is just an absolutely perfect, perfect pairing. Yes, sir. What do you Absolutely. Think? What, what do you, do you think, think, Dave? Yeah. yeah, I'm definitely getting the cedar, the oaky wood. Um, def- I think the cinnamon for me is hitting my palate as the finish. Um, it's absolutely a 
abs- this is just such a fantastic cigar. Mm-hmm. Mm. To me personally, it, I can't. I don't think I've had an Opus that was as enjoyable as this. No, no. I haven't. No, I haven't either. You know, this I is haven't. just like fantastic. And the best part. You don't even have to age it. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's so good right out of the box. You're right out of the box. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, you don't have to sit on it or for, for years and years to, you know, get the flavors that you should get right out of the box. It is just phenomenal. Yeah, totally fantastic, fantastic cigar. And I'm looking around, um, you know, the the burn on, on in the construction on mine is, is right on point. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice, tight burn line, yep. a nice, tight white ash. Um, you know, flakiness doesn't necessarily mean the construct the the cigar is constructed poorly, but I like it when the ash isn't going all over the place. Yeah. So mm-hmm. aesthetically, to me, this is very pleasing too. Yep. Uh, as you're going, and speaking to the pairing, one of the one of the flavors that I get every once in a while, not on every puff of the cigar. There's like wisps of of citrus. I totally, yep, I totally. Get and that. the patina fashion, which has the the toasted citrusy. orange in there, totally brings that out. And that citrusy uh, orange and the sweetness of the drink brings out those cedar notes mm. in the cigar, which is yeah. I think the predominant mm-hmm. flavor. That's what sets the theme for everything else. I get the citrus, and then I get the cinnamon as a finish. Is yeah, the cin- uh, cinnamon and like C- cinnamon. Cinnamon, 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 and sweet oak mm-hmm. is what I get on the finish. Yes, yes, and the, I get that, that cinnamon and like maybe a little white pepper is in the mm-hmm. retro. Yeah, yeah, there I is a that. There, there is a definite spice. There is absolutely mm-hmm. right. I think you're right, Dan. It is more of a white pepper, but it's very subtle. Mm-hmm. Um, boy, is that retro hail like a nutmeg? It's fantastic. Oh, so, so nutmeg flavorful. in the retro mm-hmm. hail. Mm-hmm. Nutmeg is a spice. Yeah. Yes, nutmeg is a spice, Dave. <laughs> oh yeah. Thanks, Dan. I'm You're welcome. Sure. Well, you yeah. just you just seemed a little unsure of yourself. Just don't so. say baking spice. Yeah. Baking spice. Don't say the B word. <laughs> don't say the B word, Dave. <laughs> so just you know, not me is a baking spice. He just needs to uh, like <laughs> Dave has been elaborate. removed from the panel. <laughs> <laughs> mm. All right, oh, there you go. Man. So um this was everybody's choice. Yep. We didn't really have to debate nope. anything. This was our top top cigar. What were some other cigars though that that were in your contenders list? Uh, for me, it was my my second was definitely the the Fiat Lux. That was just a instant hit, like right out of the box. It's so uh, cedary. It's so consistent. The burn was perfect. It was it was still a very enjoyable to cigar and you know it's seven dollars less than this guy so for the for the uh for the price so your point, idea you know well, i just think the the price point was just made it amazing because i think it holds up next to this very closely to me i think you know it is um it's a i think it's a very um there's a lot going on i think it's a complex cigar it's a very enjoyable eight dollar cigar yes very enjoyable eight dollar cigar i don't think this is overpriced though I I would pay I would pay sixteen seventeen bucks for this. Yeah, I I think you not, know what I mean. Not, initially, when you again, we're so used to CLEs being you know, around the Eight, nine, 10, 12, nine, ten dollar yeah. mark. Um, this is the first one that came in that you know leapt up to the sixteen, seventeen, eighteen dollar range, and mm. I'm like, wow, you know. And again, like I was I was hesitant to try it. Um, but Pat, like I said, dove in and, and then he just was raving about it. And then I had it right behind him and, uh, I agreed. I said, this is for the money. This is fantastic. This, this goes, this, I could hold this up there to, you know, any cigar in, in the humidor at that even more expensive, you know, some Padrones, I would say this is mm-hmm. more flavorful than, than that. And, uh, more nuanced, to it. You know. Hell, oh yes. Very much more nuanced. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and to me, that's the difference there. You know, the, the Fiat Lux is, is, is a, was a great cigar that came out. Um, it made several of our top lists, you know, but it's also very straightforward. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not a super complex cigar, no. but it's a very enjoyable cigar. And it's got great flavor. And for a, a new cigar to come out at or under 10 bucks in 2021, yep. 
was a feat in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And for it to be good yep. and enjoyable, uh, yeah, that cigar was an instant was an instant hit. Oh, the, the new blend of the EPH. Mm -hmm. That was that was one. that would that was you're stealing my thunder. Sorry, you know that was finish my thought, Dan. <laughs> That's that was if that were not a limited run cigar that is really only available at a few different places, twins being one of them. And there's um, even a few accounts. This this would have had this would have had a lot more competition as far as for for my thought. I I really enjoyed the the uh, uh, original EPH that came out as a torpedo uh, in 2019. Yep. Um, uh, the blend that came out in the Toro this year was amazing. Yep. And like I said, the, uh, Eric, uh, if you're listening, you know, the the one big thing that kept it from being my contender for Cigar of the Year for 2021 was just how limited it is. And w we've all agreed that it, it needs to be something that's widely available. I but like man, less than what half the boxes when a they're... cigar. Yeah, and one of the cigars that I thoroughly enjoyed this year and certainly would have been a contender uh, for Cigar of the Year is the Placencia Sixto Natural. Uh, oh. That was just unbelievable. Um, that that I sat back one time and had that, and I'll tell you, the cedar notes, the subtle cedar notes um, and the light spice just kept coming and coming. It was just unbelievable. It would never it's stop. So and, and that out of a... A sixty ring gauge, six sided hexagon. I mean, yeah. it's just it's inc it's incredible the amount of flavor that 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 cigar had inside. It was just beautiful. Yeah. And and the reason why it didn't, <laughs> uh, in my eyes, become my top cigar is because even <laughs> though it is a uh, regular production cigar, it is limited. It is it's just we don't get it all the time. We get it, mm -hmm. we sell out of it, and it maybe about a month or so later we get more in. And then it's so popular today. Yeah, that's, see, that's the thing. It's so popular we can't even smoke. Yeah, it and, 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 and 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 kudos to you guys here in Hooksit because you you have that Placencia Friday, yep. yeah. and a lot of the guys come in there, and it took a couple of customers to to try it, and then next thing you know, they're buying boxes of it, and we only got maybe what maybe six or eight boxes the first mm -hmm. run. Next one yep. we got a little bit more, and that they just kept buying them up, buying them up, and we haven't had any in what almost two months now. Yeah. Yeah, it's been since November. Yeah, so that yep. was one. That was one cigar that I really, really thought was going to be a contender for my cigar of the year, but because of the, the the lack of availability of it, it it I had to pull it away. Yeah, yeah. So no, I totally, yeah, totally agree with that. Um, along that line, that it, that kind of brings up another way to say what I was trying to illustrate before that maybe came off bad. Is that this this is not a cigar that most people could enjoy every day no. because of the price point. But kind of like the Placencia Almaforte is a cigar that you go to to enjoy every once in a while. Yep. Uh, or maybe to put it another way, when you put out the $20, $21, $22 for one of their cigars, you don't feel like you're getting cheated. Nope. Nope. You, you got between how long it smokes mm -hmm. and how nicely it smokes and how it makes you feel, mm -hmm. uh, you know, between the, the flavors, the room note, everything about those cigars is, is great. It's the same with this. Yeah, it's 16 or 17 bucks. It probably is not going to be the average cigar smoker's everyday thing. But this could be something that you go to on a regular basis to treat yourself yep. you know and and um uh, that's certainly how i've done it um i've had a, a a number of these since i first uh had it and it was you know kind of it took pat to really pat has a palate we all trust you put all the joking aside you know about him <laughs> being this young whippersnapper i could be his father Who likes to look at his cigars? i could i could be his grandfather <laughs> for pete's sakes but and so could Paul. Paul could be his great grandfather. Yeah, really. <laughs> but he has a great palate. He has a great palate, and so when he said the cigar is as good as it is, mm -hmm. uh, the rest of us, you know, took him at his word and and went out there, and man, he was right on. Pat's got a kudos very, to Pat. Pat's got a very unique way of describing cigars too, and 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 he's he's very much 
uh, he brings a lot of food flavors into it. Um, and like the B word. Well, yes, I'm not going to say that, I'm sure but, the B word, but, the B. <clears throat> but he, besides the B word, um, he's got a mm. very, very sensitive and developed palate. And think about it; he's really only been doing this for what, maybe a year and a half. Yeah, a couple of years at best. Yeah, I mean, he was he came in, he was novice, he didn't have really any experience with it at all. And next thing you know, um, he's he's uh, tr- trying different cigars, mm-hmm. and and then he gets certified, and then next thing you know, he's just on a roll. Yeah. Um, he just dove right into it head first, and uh, you know, kudos to him, man. He's yep. he's he, we tr- like I say, we trust him. Yep. We trust his ballot. It's, it, he's really dedicated to it. I mean, yep. we were talking about this the other day. He, he wasn't on the job officially for thirty days by the time he was certifying. Yep, he took his tobacco and certification yep. right up front and just ran with it. I, and I, I really do think that's one of the things that's helped him out. Yep. He was he was given a whole vocabulary in that uh, yep. uh, education to start thinking about. And, um, um, you know, we talk about being certified retail tobacconists. little shout-out to Jorge Armateros and Tobacco University. They also have a, a consumer certified tobacconist, a CCT. You can do that, and you can take get get the book, take the exam. It's the same book and same exam that we have to take, but the big difference being we don't work. <laughs> you don't work at a cigar shop, but you can still get a, a degree, and uh, if you are really into cigars or pipes or both, I really recommend that. That's a fantastic thing to do to make you an educated consumer and um, – uh, just go to the website, tobacconistuniversity.org, and get going. As a matter of fact, Pat and I are, are trying to come up with an idea of how we could put together some teaching elements at Twins for, for customers who might want to do that. Mm-hmm. And actually, you know, over a series of months or maybe, you know, a year, go through um, – that coursework and then end with being able to take the exam. That's still in the kind of, you know, kind of uh, preliminary stages. preliminary stages. But I think it's a great idea. Yep. No, it is. And um, he and I, I think, will be really um, good at putting together a program for that. Or at least he's really good at coming up with the ideas. And <laughs> then I have to up. do all the work. <laughs> put up. Because he's in school all the time or up at the bar. <laughs> There. That's actually, there's the truth. We're on to you, Pat. We're on to you, Pat. You're just creating more work for me. That's right. You're making me look better. I mean, no, I'm not going to complain. Mm. This cigar is amazing. Um, oh, yeah. Drink is amazing. Oh. Let's do a little uh, <coughs> cigar confessions. Mm, cigar confessions. Cigar confessions. <coughs> and that's right in line with what we're doing tonight, the Cigar of the Year and uh, Tobacco of the Year. And I said at the beginning of the show, our our um, criteria for picking a cigar or Tobacco of the Year is it's a new cigar, it's a newcomer, or it's a newcomer to twins at the very least. And from that list of, it can be, Somewhere between 20, maybe as many as 40, depending on <laughs> if it was before 2016. <laughs> now, just, you know, new cigars don't come out as as much as they have in the past, but wh- it has to be new. And my my pet peeve is that so many of these other places that come out with Cigar of the Year lists or Best Cigars of the Year have nothing to do with what's new. They just go back and do everything. And I don't understand that. I, you know, now some of these places will say, okay, well, we've reviewed X number of cigars over the, over the last 12 months, and our cigars of the year are the highest rated in that 12-month period. Okay, that's, that's, that's something. But when... A cigar of the year is something that's been out for years and years and years, or maybe it wins, you know, twice or three times over a period of time. You know, it's it's like saying, you know, 
you know, when we do the, the uh, um, you know, movie awards or whatever, you know, let's let's put Gone, Gone with the Wind in with it again, you know? <laughs> Casablanca and wins again. Casablanca wins again, again you know? What's the best sci- <laughs> sci-fi movie, special effects? Star Wars, 1978. <laughs> it was so great at the time. It was... 77. Uh, uh, come on. It's, 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 it should be new stuff. You know, when I, when I see Fuentes winning again or Padrones winning again or, you know, cigars that have been out for 20, 30 years winning again, you know, I get, I get like, what's the point? It's, it, how many, how many times can you, it doesn't seem fair to the people who are coming out with new stuff. And to me, it smacks of, this is my favorite this is my brand, or this is who paid me, mm-hmm. or something like that. It seems more to me mm-hmm. like it's under the table stuff. Or cigars so that you know you can't purchase legally here in the U.S. That yeah. really when those me. cigars yes. are rated in a magazine and, yes. and you can't get them and we can't sell them. Correct. What's what's the point? Yeah. And again, I I mean we we know who you know some of the places that publications that we're talking about. Um, but it, it, but I look at it and I'm like, yeah, that's Cuban, that's Cuban, that's Cuban. We're never going to have access to it, you yeah. know, unless you go to Cuba. Yeah, you know, and even then, thank you for it, filling it, up your pages with yeah. none of us can get. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> of course, they're thinking, hey, the magazine was thin enough as it was. <laughs> we need to put something in there, <laughs> you know. But uh, I, I, I really think that. You know, if you really want to make Cigar of the Year something, yeah. it should be something. You're celebrating something new. Yeah. Um, now, if if a cigar comes out, you know, in a in a line extension, or something, you know, I, I'll, I'll grant that. That's something that that I would I would count there. Um, for instance, the uh, the EPH, you know, Toro, I would call that a line extension to the EPH yep. series. Yep. And you know, I, I'm, you know, you heard me. I was, you know, if, if that were not such a limited cigar, um, it probably would have been my top choice for a cigar of the year. Yeah, well, the Aladino uh, Coro Reserva Figurado. Yeah. Which I love that. That's a fan. You were I, smoking that today. I did. I love that size. I think, again, we all, the, the, the Robusto, the number four, mm. uh, fantastic. Especially the number four. It's a little bit more of a fuller body, has a right. little bit more punch to it. But that figurado to me is just like a perfect medium smoke, lots of cedar. I love cedar. I love mm-hmm. cedar in my cigars. If I can get a cedar note that just keeps coming at me, I I just fall in love with it. I really, really do. And that's one cigar that I uh, I cherish along with this one here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That Aladino Vintage Choro was something else to me, yep. too. I love that one, too. Yep. Unbelievable. That's another cedar yep. spice. And that was, another, yep. that was another cigar that was in my top five, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, the the uh, Toro, mm-hmm. if it wasn't, it should have been. Yep. Um, that whole vintage line is, again, it's it's another great line of cigars that's at or under ten dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, the elegant the elegante elegante. Um, their Lancero. Phenomenal. My goodness. Phenomenal. That's what eight. Yeah, <coughs> eight they're bucks. all they're all eight seven or eight dollars. Uh, yep. Yeah, the Some Toro's eight ninety nine. Yeah. Some of the best Lanceros on the market, and and man. I know it's long. I know it's thin. You may think like you're saying something about yourself if you're smoking one of those. But you're n- the, re- the reality is it takes a real man to smoke a Lancer. <laughs> yep. And it takes a real man to smoke a Lancer. And in they market. are fantastic. And they are. They're some of the best Lanceros on the market, and they're all under 10 bucks. Yep. Um, they're very difficult to roll. And um, the fact that They've got that flavor profile that hits you every single time. It's amazing. I think my favorite is still the Maduro one. Oh, the that, San Andreas, the, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. the, the Maduro, um, yep. the Aladino Maduro mm-hmm. Elegante is an, an incredible cigar for seven fifty. dollars yep. retail. As a amazing. Certain, as a certain TV personality says, it's flavor town. <laughs> it's flavor town. <laughs> it's a party in your mouth. <laughs> All right, so final verdict on uh, oh. this and the pairing here. 
Well, first of all, the pairing has just been unbelievable. I mean, this I, you can't go wrong with the patina fashion mm. and the CLE Cameroons. You just cannot go wrong with them. It is just perfect, perfect, perfect. The cinnamon notes you get out of the patina fashion oh. just go so well with the cigar. It just enhances all the flavors. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the, the citrus notes mm. from it just pull out that cedar note. It, it's just, just, just it's nonstop. It really, really non-stop, is. Nonstop, baby. This, yeah. is, this is one of those pairings where... The cigar improves the drink with the cedar notes, that cinnamon spice. And everything nice. And everything <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then the drink improves the cigar. It improves the sweetness. It draws out the cedar. Those citrus notes, which then go back into the – this is one of those perfect pairings for me. Yep. This is truly a perfect pairing. Yep, it really is. Just, I've, I've just nev- amazing. I, I said I, I've never had a pairing – that I've enjoyed so much other than this right here. Yeah. This, this cigar in this patina fashion has just been phenomenal. Absolutely. You concur? He I concurs. Can. I concur. Someone has to concur since Pat's not here. Yeah, somebody has to concur. I, concur. <laughs> I do. And it's absolutely phenomenal. They yeah, match each other so well. To say, uh, oh, well. The cedars, the cinnamons, <laughs> the creaminess, cedars cinnamons. the sweetness. It's just, oh. Yeah, it, it, there's just so much flavor in this. And nothing is really over the top. It's it's all so well melded. It's like a symphony of flavors. Yeah. It's it's hard to pick out all the instruments that are in this symphony. Mm-hmm. That's how I that's the illustration I would use to kind of explain the the complexity it's of like, this. Yeah. It's just really really incredibly balanced so that all those flavors are there. And if you're not taking the time to sit and sip through the cigar, you're going to miss them. And it's just what a what a wonderful, wonderful cigar. Christian, this is fantastic. Yes. Yeah, kudos. Yeah. Thank you, Osama. And you got Cigar of the Year from Not Just Bow and Smoke. Mm. All right. Now, not doing any transitions this time. Oh. We're yeah. going right to the pipe. Right to the pipe. And right. our pipe tobacco of the year. GLP's Windjammer by Gregory Pease. And uh, right off the tin, it says a rich and satisfying cut cake, cut cake comprising sweet, ripe Virginia's, nutty burleys, unflavored, toasted black Cavendish, mm. and a generous measure of Perique. A splash of dark rum ties it all together and adds a bit more sweetness. As you enjoy this slow, clean-burning flake, You'll find hints of cocoa, black walnuts, and dried fruits, enhancing complex, natural tobacco goodness. Full on the palate, with a delightful aroma. Enjoy smooth sailing with Windjammer. And uh, further on the uh, LDC, Laudisi website, it says, GOP's uh, Windjammer is a robust Virginia Perique blend enhanced by Nutty Burleys and a splash of dark rum before being sliced into delicate flakes. Your customers, meaning customers in the stores, mm-hmm. who enjoy other non-Latakia GOP's mixtures like Haddo's Delight are sure to find a new favorite in Windjammer. And that is exactly what happened at Twins. Yep. Uh, once this came out, it has... It, it, w- it came out, I think, in February last it, year. It was very early in the year. Very yep. early in the year. Yep. It quickly became uh, one of the best-selling tins that we have. We carry. <laughs> no uh, thanks to me and Dan. <laughs> we we carry about a about a, a hundred different tins of pipe tobacco, and for this to end up being new and jumping ahead of everything else over a year, it it is definitely a customer favorite. Mm. I've gone through seven tins myself. <laughs> Three. Uh, it's just a fantastic, fantastic tobacco. It's like other GLPs. It's manufactured by Cornell and Deal, Virginia Perique Blend, Black Cavendish, Burley Perique, and Virginia. Does have some dark rum in there uh, to make the flakes, uh, and that's the cut. It is a flake. Um, we're doing. Still continuing with the uh, patina fashion with this. Mm. We also have some uh, Woodford mm. uh, double oak no, 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 left no. over from last week. So we we can maybe try a couple of different pairings with this and see what works yeah. better. Sure. Why not? Why not? Why not? Um, 
So while I'm lighting my pipe here, uh, mm. Paul, what are you picking up from this? We both smoked some earlier today. Yes, yeah. I had to re I had to re refresh my memory because uh, it's been a little bit since I've had this. But I'll tell you right now, um, a lot of I got a lot of creamy notes, nice fruit notes, uh, some some wood, uh, that that nice little bit of spice, some nutty flavors too. That retro hail, however, wow, mm. just a nice <laughs> deep, rich spice it is just yeah. so so intoxicating it it's really like a, is it's really like a raisin spice mm -hmm. spice raisins are yeah unbelievable yeah and again um i had a, a pipe tobacco that i really enjoyed this year later in the year um that i was vying for the, <laughs> for the <laughs> tobacco of the year uh but again it's a it's a one-shot deal it's limited once we sell the last tin that's all we'll see of it that was well, the we all loved it. We all loved it very, very much. It. That's the Cornell and Deals House Reserve mm -hmm. 2021. Yeah, that Virginia blend yep. was amazing. Unheard of. It was amazing. Amazing. Just, just an absolute fruit bomb in my in, mm -hmm. in my eyes. Um, but this particular tobacco, the Windjammer, is uh, a year-round offering, um, and you get a lot of those. Like I said, creamy. Uh, wonderful fruit flavors and, and the, the the sweet the, the sweet uh, deep fruit notes that I get out of this is very similar to the house reserve but you do get those woody and that nice the, the spice spice yeah, is just sort of the perique really really shines through it's not overpowering by any means it just adds a, it's more of a supporting role but on that retro hail wow it's right there mm -hmm. I just can't believe this Cavendish mm. like you know it's just it's so well blended yeah it really is but I think it adds a little bit of that sweetness. Definitely. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. mm. So good. Yep. Yeah. E even out of a corn cob. No, what what did you, you said when you were describing it? Was it what kind of walnut? Did you say dark walnut or black walnut? Uh, I believe, let's see, I can go right back up and read oh, it. Oh, yeah. Black walnuts. Yeah. Oh. I've never had a black walnut. But, <laughs> but I get that, that. Stewed fruit, mm -hmm. nuts, cocoa, figs, oh, mm -hmm. especially from the uh, Perique there. It's got that piquant kick in the retro, you know, that nice Perique spice. And the finish is just a smooth, dark sweetness with notes of raisins yeah. on it. And this patina fashion is amazing with this. The sweetness oh. in the drink. The the citrus goes with the the uh, Virginias. Anything kind of citrusy or fruity or sweet is gonna bring out the Virginias. And man, it is so tasty. Mm. It really does bring out the Virginias. In oh it. yes, yep. And um, you still get that perique, that figginess, that raisiny. But uh, it, it it almost subdues it a little bit so that you can enjoy the Virginias more. But you get you get more of a nuanced picture of the Perique. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. This is a I would say this is a medium intensity level, but full body flavor. Mm -hmm. Just incredible. Yeah. Complexity uh, is is just unbelievable. You get so many different flavors coming out coming out of this. And uh, but without being a, an overly intense tobacco, mm. really, really well done on this one. Yep. Um, what do I want to say? Jeez. Oh man, this is so um, good. There you go. Ow. You know, <laughs> House, you House Reserve <laughs> 2021 was a was a great contender, but again, just because of its limited release. Um, it was it was tough to do. Yep. Another one that that I personally would have picked. It's mm. not everybody's thing, but it would have been one of my real contenders. And again, it was a limited release. Was the Beast? Oh yeah, that was a that the was Beast a great... by Cornell and Deal, a uh, yeah. big Perique bomb. That but it was, it was like Perique. Sweet. It was Perique, and it was Cavendish, and it was oh. literally soaked in rum for a week. <laughs> It was so <laughs> sweet. You know, I still have some left. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I have a, a tin from the original release five years ago, and I haven't jarred it. I haven't put in any kind of humidification device. And, it, you know, so it's been open for, for months, and it's the, the, the little paper 
covering that comes with Cornell and Deal stuff, brown. it's wet. <laughs> it's still wet. It hasn't mm-hmm. dried out. There's the, the the tobacco is still like wet to the t- it sticks to your fingers. It's it's amazing. It make guy with Ho- Hogarth. It, it puts them to shame, and their stuff is as wet as it gets. You could wring out the tobacco and wring out the water. <laughs> this though, you're wringing it out, and what do you get? Rum. It's hanging around. It's just, it, it is just such a unique smoke. I really enjoyed that, mm-hmm. and I know people really enjoyed um, um, the uh, from beyond. From beyond. As well. Oh yeah. yes, from that beyond. was another big hit. And, mm-hmm. and again, you know, the reason we didn't really consider it for the tobacco of the year was because of how limited it was yep. once out and then it's gone who knows if it's ever coming back um you know uh and i might like to know what people think about that should limited releases that come out in a given year be considered for a cigar of the year or pipe well, tobacco of the year that's easily or, fixed or you know, should you should it be something that generally people are able to get, and then give those other cigars and tobaccos honorable mentions, you know, or you know, put them in their category? Well, but uh, I think you should just do both. Okay, so you have the cigar of the year, and then you have or pipe of the year, whatever, and then you have the cigar and pipe of the year limited edition. Yeah, I think that's right. It should be you a know, separate episode have too. A, have a mm. separate. We need to do know, a separate need, category. We need to do. We Is need to do another episode. Yes. <laughs> limited <laughs> limited <laughs> cigar <laughs> and pipe tobacco <laughs> of the year. Cigar and pipe tobacco of the year. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and if we ever get in the uh, <laughs> naturals, we'll you know. Yes. <laughs> just, just like last week when we couldn't figure out at, the, at at one point which barrel we wanted to choose, so we said let's just bring in all three. Well, mm-hmm. maybe it, 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 I'd like to know from people who are watching or listening. Yes, please. You know, if you're listening live, put it, put it in the comments. If you're listening after the fact, make sure you put it on our Facebook page or on our Instagram or something. Let us know what you think. Um, should we have multiple categories, you know, for the for this? You know, I know I, – I don't – you know, I know – People are like, you know, they, they go, you know, tobacco shop of the year, you know, factory of the year. I, I don't know that I want to get into all that. I mean, other people, are, I think, are much better situated to make decisions like that. But we could we could do Cigar oh. of the Year limited edition mm-hmm. or you know, tobacco limited edition. Yeah. Well, yes, oh. that would be the yeah. obvious yes, counterpoint. Mm. Yes. You know, or maybe oh. we could even do, you know, best, you know, pairing of the year. Have you have you tried the Woodford yet with it? Yes, because I, I I actually like the Woodford pairing better. You do? Yep. I think it brings more of. Uh, I'm getting more of the sweetness out of it. The retro hail is stronger to me. I, I I honestly feel like the patina passion actually dulls it, just a little bit. Well, with the Woodford, it's not bringing out the Virginia notes as much as the patina fashion is to me. To me, it's the same. I think the Woodford's a little too strong for it. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. The Patina Fashion definitely enhances the Virginia notes in the tobacco. The Woodford kind of hides it a little bit. It brings out more of the spice. Yep. Yeah. It, it amps up the spice. It amps up. It amps up. It amps up the spice. Spice yep. is something else. Yeah. You know, I think, kind of like putting a, kind of like the same reason you'd put you'd put, a ball of ice in your in a really strong whiskey or bourbon yep. so that you get to taste more of the the nuances behind things by watering it down a little bit that's kind of how i feel the patina fashion works with this particular blend it helps me to see deeper into it by experiencing some nuances of the flavors because the perique isn't so potent now, if you like Perique, and, and one of the, I would say this though, Dave, the Woodford would pair very well with the Bayou Morning. Mm, that because, was another contender. Because that, yeah, that's one of my top five, mm-hmm. and because that's a twenty-five percent Perique blend mm. with Virginia, and I'll tell you, I love vapors. You know, Virginia Perique, Perique blends are one of my favorites, and that I think this Woodford would pair very well with that. And it would actually enhance those Perique notes and really. I'm fuzzy on the whole vapor category. Like, is that not an aromatic? <coughs> like, where I, I'm kind of confused with that. Vape, vapor just means it's a Virginia Perique. Virginia, blend. Pro, Virginia Perique. Okay, 
Okay. Yep. Yep. But with twenty five percent perique in that blend. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Now that now would now we would be looking at that as a pairing, in my eyes. Yep. Um, Rod says he thinks we should have the two categories. Yeah. He likes that idea. Yeah. So we'll maybe we'll look to make that change this year. Maybe. 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 Maybe, maybe we'll do, we'll do retro and <laughs> do it this year too. <laughs> Who can stop us? No one. <laughs> We're accountable to no one. <laughs> mm. Yep, yep. Totally, totally agree. Um, yeah, and then have the 603 guys back on. And what goes best with the mm -hmm. limited edition? <laughs> <laughs> really go nuts with it. Now, what, what put GLPs over the top for you, Paul, other than like, those other tobaccos that you mentioned. I think just the complexity of this tobacco and all the flavors you're getting out of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can I love Virginia Perique, but this one here really has a tremendous amount of flavor for a mm -hmm. nice medium intensity uh, tobacco, full flavored. You know, that, again, that, that I, I get a lot of one thing I really really love is that creaminess to this tobacco. Mm -hmm. The creamy oh, Virginia yeah. notes is just Very smooth. unbelievable, and uh, so that really is what kind of won me over for yep. tobacco of the year yeah i haven't had a creaminess like this since uh spark blood yeah <laughs> which ironically was our tobacco of the year last year, last year. Mm. which was another glp's mm -hmm. blend so glp's has topped our list twice thank you greg now this is something mm. else that i'll say about this you know if somebody comes out with another great cigar or a great pipe tobacco and it's a brand new thing I'm not going to n knock them off or give them down points because we did it the year before. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, that's uh, note the difference here between what I'm saying now and what other people, what, what my complaint was about people who nominate the same cigar, you know, for these lists over and over and over again. If you come out with a brand new something, and if you won the year before, I think you should have just as much of a chance to to win. It should be based on what you're competing with that came out that year. Yep. It shouldn't be, well, we don't want to give Greg Pease or we don't want to give Christian Aroa, you know, the same kind of if, – if, if Christian comes out with another cigar next year that we all feel is – head and shoulders above the rest. Yeah. I'm not going to feel bad about saying, hey, you know what? We gave it to them again. It's right. not like they're giving us money. Nope. It's not like we're not being influenced by anything. No this influence. is, this is we're, we're talking about what we see at our store. So there's there's something yep. about, you know, sales, what we see going. Just four but also, white guys smoking. But we're, we're four <laughs> tobacconists who have very different tastes. And if we can agree on something as being – you know, what we think is the best newcomer of the year, I think that says something. Yep. Yep. And the fact that we're not being paid or endorsed by anybody to make these things, I think, gives us a level of uh, um, authenticity Authenticity that some other places don't have. Well, we're on bias, you know. I mean, yeah, we're on bias. Like I said, we've got we've – got no one in our back pocket here to to tell us what to do, and and we we want to tell you folks what we think is the best in in the categories. Yep. And if, if like I said, if Christian Aurora comes out with another cigar that we think is going to be the best one, then that's, that's what that's, wins. That's what wins. If yep. if Greg Pees and GLPs comes out with another tobacco that we think is the number one, hey, well, if some no there name it is. comes out and it's a <laughs> you know first cigar or whatever, that's that's going to be it. If yeah. we like it, that's what it'll be. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Real yep. simple. Mm. Um, mm. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> it's almost hard to think sometimes because <laughs> you're just like focused on it. Mm. Now, you still think the. Well, did I you mix them? Did, you did? Yeah. Good. He poured. You poured the Woodford into yep. the patina fashion? Yep. <laughs> that's, a, that's a Nick thing. Nick Lanigan. Mm -hmm. it Nicotine. Just Nicotine's on. Yep, yep, here we go. Prison Nick. Prison Nick. Prison Nick. 
That's our new that's our new uh, sound for whenever we mention Nick, we get the prison Nick sound. Yep, there it is. Um, I love that. Let let me um try the Woodford here again. All right, me too. Mm -hmm. Really nice, deep, oaky, smoky, caramel notes. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. it, it, the caramel gets sweeter, you know, on the finish as it goes. Well, it's funny because that time I got a lot more Virginia notes than I did the first time I had the Whitford. That's what mm -hmm. I'm saying. You got kind of got to like, you know, yeah. chew the, chew it, and then and then take a big puff, and then it's just like, wow. Yeah, the retro hail definitely got more amped up. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. It did. amplifies the perique. Yep. It amplifies the Perique. Yep. I think the Patina yeah. amplifies the Virginias. Yep. And and I'll, uh, the, the the Cavendish, the sweetness in the Cavendish. Yep. And then yeah, I mixed them, and now it does both. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Just make your own cocktail, yep, Dave. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. The Dave tail. The Dave yep. tail. The Dave tail. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the spritz of Seven Up. <laughs> Hey, I don't Add drink soda just anymore. Just the right amount of sugar. Mmm. I, I don't drink soda anymore. <laughs> Let's cut out. No more soda. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad I've been a positive influence yep, on you over the last few years. Water and bourbon. Water, <laughs> bourbon. Water and bourbon. There you go. Water and bourbon. <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> with, with coffee in the morning. Yep. There you go, my yep. friend. Oh my goodness. Mm. <laughs> you, know what, yeah, you guys created it. There you go. Mm -hmm. We created a monster. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul, you're smoking the. Uh, Corn cob pipe because <laughs> you were a bad boy. I, I, was, <laughs> I was rushing out this morning and and I said I know I'm forgetting something, but I'll re I'll figure it out when I get to work. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, I get to work. I'm like I know what I forgot, and that was my pipes. Mm -hmm. Now that said, a lot of people like and use corn cob pipes because the corn cob is actually a very neutral, a neutral, yep, it flavor. flavor. It, ha it doesn't have the kind of flavor profile that that. Uh, Briar does, yep. and so a lot of people use those to get, get a truer taste of the tobacco. Are you enjoying this as much through your corn cob as you were when you had your actual pipe? Yeah, I am. I, I, I'm surprised too, because I mean, again, it's it's very hot right now on my fingers. Mm -hmm. But other than that, um, I am enjoying it just because I think it's just pulling those flavors out. Mm -hmm. uh, tremendously and i'm noticing it a lot more now than i did with my peterson mm. so so i mean don't get me wrong <laughs> i wish i had my peterson with me, <laughs> but but still um the just seems like the, the 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 sweetness the creaminess the spice um is ever so present mm. on, on my palate um with this so yeah no problem here all right now couple of questions here. Mm. I just wish questions. we could say lit. <clears throat> what do we got? Which of the two pairings, the Woodford and the Windjammer and the Patina and the Windjammer, do you think was better? I think we already know what we're going to say. Yeah. But, uh, Dave, can you even have an opinion anymore? The Patina you, Woodford was The Patina really Woodford <laughs> was my favorite pairing. Yeah. The Woodford fashion? The Woodford fashion, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like I got Beth of both worlds. I mean, I'm, you guys should try it. You still got no, some drink left? No. Got some drink? Yeah. No, mm -hmm. the patina was definitely the best one. Okay, you you were favoring the patina. Yes, but if there yes. was no wood for patina, then I would I would definitely pick the patina. <laughs> you you <laughs> your whole you just you the whole time you've been saying the Woodford was your favorite pairing with with the GLPs. Now you're now you're saying the opposite. I did. Are you confused right now? No, it's it's. He is I like, I like with the patina. It brought out you know more of the, uh, you know more of the 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 Cavendish, which was really nice. And I feel like if I was gonna have it again and again and again, uh, that's that's probably where I'd go to. Um, I think that you know the Woodford was probably a little was intense and it was a nice change. But I feel like the patina overall was like the uh, my favorite. If I don't include the patina Woodford, so. 
I'm Dave and confused for a reason, okay? <laughs> we love you, Dave. Um, you were the Paul. Patina. Mo- mo- patina. The patina, absolutely. Yeah. Are you sure? No, the Woodford was good. <laughs> I liked, the Woodford, I liked the both. Woodford, the Woodford was good, but <laughs> clearly the patina wins out. Okay. I, I, I would agree with that, too. I think the patina did much more to help bring out the flavors and and help me in, to enjoy the tobacco in in ways that you can't because there is so much perique in here. Yeah. And so I feel like cutting some of that perique with the sweetness of the drink allowed me to appreciate frankly the perique more because I got to dig into some of the more subtle flavors behind the big bold stuff that you get when you have so much perique in a blend like like Windjammer does. So now the bartenders can expect to be even more busy Mm -hmm. creating the patina fashion because we're now going to be offering it not only to the CLE Cameroon, Mm -hmm. but to the Windjammer. But to the (laughs) Windjammer, the cigar and pipe tobacco of the year and the pairing of the year. Now, here's the next question. Which did you prefer more? The cigar cigar and pairing pairing pairing. or the pipe pairing? The cigar cigar pairing. The cigar pairing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the cigar pairing was Perfect. perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. all it needs to be said. Perfect. perfect. How would you rate this? Oh, if this perfect. wasn't perfect, if that was a, if that was a ten out of ten, this would be like a, a really 9. close second. Out of 10. A, a yeah. really close second. Yeah, there's no <laughs> question. This, I, I was surprised too because when you know, having you know this before, it's hard to, I guess, get your mind around a cocktail. Uh, in my eyes, with this that little cinnamon note, um, adding so much mm. to the pipe tobacco. But it does. Mm-hmm. It really, really does. It gets like I said. The citrus flavor really helps to bring out um, the the uh, that uh, the, the stewed fruit flavors. Yep. Um, I was thinking maybe we would do the Woodford as a second uh, as a second pairing with the pipe tobacco. But I'm so glad we had enough patina to be able to do this. So yeah. Yep. 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 I agree. I think the Woodford as awesome. Now, regular Woodford, I think, would have been different. But the double oak here mm. has that extra strength yep. in the in terms of body yep. uh, that I think was just a little too much as far as my palate is concerned uh, for this. Yeah. Um, all right, so mm. there we go. The, the the patina fashion is the preferred pairing for both. But if you want a perfect perfect pairing. Mm-hmm. The Patina Fashion and the CLE T H E E K E three seventeen fifty four by six <gasps> is a perfect pairing. Perfect pairing. Perfect mm. pairing. Just ask for the CLE Signature Cameroon Toro. Everybody will know what you're talking about. Yep. Um, if there's any kind of critique I could give the cigar, that would be it. No one. I mean, to to ask for that is is. What's the point? You need to take a breath first. I mean, what, what's the point of, of of giving a cigar an well, official well, no. name like that? Uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully, it's Christian when Aurora. Christian, when Christian I'm, explains it, well, it'll actually be worth it. When he know? does, if yeah. you hear that, Christian, mm-hmm. you gotta <laughs> explain yourself here. I mean, the yeah, we need seven twenty four eighteen seventy four one thirteen was bad enough, but you've taken this whole thing to the next level mm-hmm. of alphabetic number naming cigars. Yeah, this this is amazing, but it came out on a great cigar, so I can't complain too. If that's the worst you can say about something, I mean that's it. That's it, man. Yeah. So yep. do we have a? Would you I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give the name like a four. But the cigar gets a ten. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, would you rather? Yeah. Would, you, would you rather? Question? I would rather. Yeah. All right, Dave. Then uh, we'll ask you first. Would you rather? Would you rather work? <laughs> <laughs> you just failed. Would you rather you. work cleaning up toxic waste mm. or Nothing. work as a mortician's assistant? Oh, um, I <laughs> think I definitely go for the mortician's assistant there. Really? However, my you know my really? curiosity would definitely you know uh, I'm I'm gonna go for the safer option. Are you sure? Not safer? possibly dying. There's from the Rona around there. You could get all sorts of things from dealing with dead bodies. Dave. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm I'll, uh, radiation sickness is uh I'm all set. What about dead things, bugs? I'm, I'm what that's about cool. Beetles. Yep. That's worms. 
come out uh, of the eyeballs. I'm down with that. I don't know that. You, you know, I don't know. I don't mm-hmm. know, Dave. You're yeah. good. I think you're you're thinking philosophically, but I think uh, when it comes right yeah. down to dead, it, dead body could explode. That's fine because of you know all the freaking gases and everything. That's cool. But at least I know I'm not gonna have like, I'm not gonna turn into a prune the next day because <laughs> I was shoveling elephant feet. You know, elephant feet. Well, like. that's uh, the elephant foot is like you know in Chernobyl they they have an elephant foot. That's what they call the uh, the actual muck that's left over from the meltdown. It's called an elephant foot. So there you go. More useless trivia from Dave and Confused. Suck so called him Cliffy. Cliffy from uh, Cheers. Mm. Cliffy from Cheers. World's greatest <laughs> source of useless useless World's information. World's greatest source of useless information. <laughs> Paul, what about uh, you? Yeah, no, Mortician's assistant. Mortician's assistant. Yeah, I'm yeah, with Dave. See, all I, that, I, all I, that crap, and they agree I, with me. I, I don't have no desire to clean up toxic mm-hmm. waste, mm-hmm. and uh, even though it's not ideal, um, yeah, I, I, you I wouldn't I, vacation I, I, in Chernobyl. I, no, no, and I certainly don't want to go there. And no, I'll, I'll, I'll take my chances <laughs> with with dead bodies. <laughs> I'm gonna buck the trend. Then I'm going with toxic waste. <laughs> I'm going with toxic waste. You got all the protection on and everything. You got all those cool techie tools and everything. Being able to say that. And then, you know, if you have somebody that you really need to, you know, get rid of or shut up, you got the means to do it. You got all that toxic waste. But you got to get yourself really right in there. Into that I mean, you've foot, seen yeah. pictures of these guys getting like, like knee deep in this stuff. And it, it's, no, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I can't see you looking at dead people. Here, weigh this lung for me. I, I, especially Dave. <laughs> Dave would like vomit all over the I place. I would not. I'd be like, wow, this is cool. But the, uh, and then it melts and these little worms come out and everything. So and you're like, oh the, my God. Oh. Okay. Just so you know, all of the people that helped with the cleanup from Chernobyl have, are dead. So they had the protective gear. It didn't freaking matter. Talking so, about Chernobyl, Dave. Talking yeah. about something that happened like what forty years ago in Russia. Oh God, this is this is like you know. I'm sorry. You know, I've watched a lot of programs on it. That's all I'm saying. I'm sure you did. Yeah. See, the fact that you are much more interested in toxic waste makes me think that. In you reality, know what not to do. You, you would really rather <laughs> work. You seem to know a lot about knowing... something you don't have no desire to do. Dude. <laughs> I, I have no idea where this information is coming from, but I don't know. I watch like CSI and stuff like that, and that stuff fascinates me. Oh, just, he's know. getting it from CSI. <laughs> That's awesome. Yep. Yep. NCIS. You know, Ducky. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'd yep. love to work with Ducky. Yep. Great. Well, next Monday on Not Just Blowing Smoke, we're going to do a little something old, something new. Ooh. Something old, something married? new. And what we're doing is something old is we're going to be looking at another GOP's blend that came out a couple of years ago, uh, Penny Farthing. Ooh. Something yeah. we haven't looked at in a while. We're going to revisit that. We thought it was really good then. As a matter of fact, I think we had a patina fashion with the Penny Farthing. Did we really? Uh, back then. Are we going to have another we, pairing next I week? I believe we did. A... I think we're going to... Well, <laughs> we, we're either going to be true to what we did and have another patina fashion, or we'll have Pat Wente come up with yes. another... Pat's going to have to put his thinking cap on. You know, give us another thing, and we'll see if it was as good as the patina fashion. We need to was. have another penicillin show. That's what I think. Because that was like our favorite drink ever, I think. Well, then we'll have to get Kendra to put her, put her cap on and provide it for us. <clears throat> oh, whatever. Why are you rotating like that, Dave? Rotating? No, what do you mean? You're going like this. I don't know. I'm you're just shaking, like my, I'm, I'm shaking my I'm shaking my It's legs, not. So. No, your whole body is shaking. I know. But your head is shaking. You're like a living bobblehead. <laughs> have you had gummies? No. You're, you're, acting, like you, you're acting like you had gummies. I did not. It's like you're no boogieing gummies. down to some secret music in your mm. head. It's like you're just rocking out. It's like you're rocking out to. I'm in to a good mood. Staying alive by the I'm Bee Gees. I'm in a great mood. Stay in a good mood, mood, Dave. I'm I'm with my bros. Mm-hmm. I, I finally have a a wonderful, beautiful, gorgeous girlfriend. So, <laughs> yep. 
I'm on cloud it's nine. It's amazing. She what they is do, really, huh? really sweet. She's she really nice, Dave. Yeah, she is. Very happy for you. Um, but we're going to be doing Penny Farthing GLPs next week, which we haven't looked at for a couple of years. Is it still as good as we thought? Oh, we'll let you know. And then we're going to look at something new. And uh, that something new is the latest offering by Steve Saka and Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust, the Paladin de Saka. Ooh. We're going to look at that cigar. Oh, and yeah. his latest cigar um, really comes out on the top. If you thought the CLE um, uh, signature series was expensive, <laughs> 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 wait till you see the price tag on the Paladin. Because it's, you know... Right up there, around thirty bucks. Jeez, is it worth it? Is it worth that? We'll let you know the paladin. next week on Not Just Blowing Smoke. Hope you're here with us. If nothing else, you'll be able to watch people smoke something that you may or not were not be able to afford ever in your life. <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying. So we'll see you next Monday. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Thank you very much. Thanks, folks. <laughs>